the point that i make is that if hindu kings appropriated the image in the kingdom of their rival they never desecrated they honored that image brought it to their kingdom constructed a temple in honor of that image and made show that it was venerated and worshiped now i'll just give you couple of examples if i may uh, the first image that we, the first case that is recorded actually goes back to the around the second century before common era that relates to orissa or kaling now this evidence is there in an inscription that survives to this day and it is called the hathi gumpha inscription it is engraved on a cave in orissa and that cave still stands and so does that inscription though that inscription is not fully intact it has been damaged in parts because it's more than 2000 years old so there is this king kharvel of orissa and in this inscription he writes that some time ago a nanda king had come to my kingdom and taken away a revered image kaling jin now kaling jin seems to indicate it was a jin a jain image of a priest or i mean of a tirthankar who was probably from that region now he writes in this inscription that i marched with my army into the palace of this nanda king and i'm proud to record that i brought back that image so the point to note is that the nanda king did not desecrate that image and the king brought back that image it shows a shared spiritual cultural heritage ma'am does this uh, mean that the difference between image appropriation and image destruction that you talk about yes it's very different they are two different things so image appropriation means that you are recognizing the power of the image that is in the hands of your rival but you are both honoring that image now i was giving you the example of khajurao uh, yasho varman was the name of a king who constructed this temple that temple is still there in khajurao any of you can go and see it the image that he instated in that temple vaikunth vishnu that image had changed hands through six rulers at least from all parts of india that image went from one ruler to another to another none of those rulers thought of desecrating that image or harming it in any way each one revered it and finally when yashovarman got that image he instated it in this temple lakshman temple that he built at khajurao the temple is still standing i'll give you one more example we've all heard of the vijayanagar king krishna devaray krishna devaray he uh, went to war with the king of orissa and when he won that battle he took from that kingdom of orissa a revered krishna image an image of krishna and he brought it back to hampi and he instated that image in a krishna temple the krishna temple still stands the image is not there because hampi itself was vandalized and desecrated but how do we know he brought back that image because he put an inscription on the wall of that krishna temple which gives this full story so i am saying that to equate these instances with mass desecration in the medieval period is the work of some historians who wrote in the immediate aftermath of partition and after that that theory has not been uh, corrected by subsequent left historians and some western scholars they've gone on perpetuating that myth or false folk now you know we are talking about the difference between image appropriation and image desecration now in ghazni that is the place from where mahmud ghaznavi came to india uh, about 50 years back 
an Italian archaeological team excavated at that site in Ghazni. And there, among the many things they found, was a marble statue bust of Brahma. Because obviously some pieces were taken back as, you know, museum, as artifacts or whatever. So this Brahma image that this Italian archaeological team found in the excavations 50 years ago, it was very surprising for them. They said the face, the nose has not been cut off or chopped off, but the face is absolutely flat. Uh, the eyes, ears, mouth, we cannot distinguish because the face has become flat, but it, the nose was not chopped off or the face was not desecrated deliberately. So how do we account for this? And they said the face had become flat because thousands of people entering a masjid had trod on this when entering. So you know when thousands of feet trample on an object, obviously that object becomes flattened. So the face was flat and they explained this. So this is just to highlight uh, the difference between appropriation and desecration. 